Hey everyone, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. We're here in Tokyo, Japan for the Java CCC conference and I'm here with Edson Yanaga. Edson, welcome. Thank you very much, Jim. A pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's very loud here, but I'm hoping these microphones are only picking up me and you. Uh, we're at the party, basically, after the conference. There's about a thousand people here. We got, I don't know, three, four hundred actually here in this, uh, actually in this room right now. Uh, but you spoke earlier today, and something about Sparkus, right? And I was very intrigued with the talk because you seemed very, very passionate about this. So let's start there. Tell me about your talk. Okay. Yes, today I talked about Quarkus, and the, the title of my session was Coding That Sparks Joy with Quarkus. Yes, and it was very nice to be here because uh, I s stole the Spark and Joy theme from Maria Kondo, which happens to be Japanese too. So lots of reference from here. But I think that really sparks joy uh, because in the past, I like to make this joke, Java developers are very good in social media or all this stuff because Java developers, they have a lot of available time. We're always waiting for our code to compile, to compile for a test to be run, for our application server to be restarting. So yes, it takes like, I don't know, one, two hours per day to be waiting for this stuff. And with Quarkus, I think it changes the landscape of the Java development experience because you don't have to wait for anything anymore with Quarkus. Um, has a lot of other features, but the one that I like the most is the ability to, for you to just save the file and you just go to your browser, issue a new request. In a matter of like 100 milliseconds, the response is already there. So we don't have to be jealous anymore uh, for, uh, about JavaScript developers or Ruby developers because we actually might be even faster than that. Well, that's actually something I was going to mention because when I was in your talk, I noticed some reactions when they saw how quickly the app runs. Yes, I was like uh, very surprised because everywhere I show the, like, the Quarkus development experience, like you can see that the people's eyes start to shine. But here in Japan, every time I save the file and issue a reload and it was instantaneous, like you had a very like, uh, like uh, say, claps. But in a Japanese way, like very silent, but they were clapping, and I thought it was a lot of fun. So, um, how long have you been talking about this? Uh, Quarkus was released in March 2019, so right now it has been, yeah, eight months uh, that I've been talking about Quarkus, and well, it seems to be doing very well. So, what's the reaction been? Uh, actually, the reaction earlier today, was that similar to what you're getting around the world? Oh, yes, definitely. And I think that, uh, as I mentioned in my talk this morning, I think that a lot of us Java developers, including me, I think we were we felt like threatened about our skills because Java wasn't the perfect fit for this new cloud native native world. When Java was created 25 years ago, the world was different. Like the web was like exploding at the time. We used to have like one single big server with lots of memory, and our server would be running for a lot of time. And now with the cloud, we have usually much smaller instances, but more instances. And we want to scale these instances uh, like up and down by uh, spreading more instances than having a bigger one. So that's why a lot of people left Java for other technology in the past five, seven years. And I thought, honestly, that I would have to do so. But um, yeah, Because you mentioned that you wanted to retire as a Java developer, but you weren't too sure. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, yeah, maybe I, I better start learning other technologies. But now with Quarkus, I was so happy. I am so happy because for me, Quarkus represents the possibility or the certainty that we will be able to still keep using Java in the next 25 years. So I'll be able to retire using Java. I don't know about my sons or my grandkids or something like that. But yes, Java will still be the number one in the next at least 25 years. One of the things I noticed in your bio for your talk is that you describe yourself as a, a software craftsman. Uh, that's an interesting term. I've heard the term used before, um, but it certainly implies quality and, and you know, focus and, and the ability to just not produce software, but to produce you know, beautiful software, absolutely scalable software, highly you know, high quality software. What does it mean to you? And actually, why did you use the term? Okay. Yes, uh, I've learned the term like many years ago and I still keep that in my bio because for me, 
software is not just a job or a, or a profession. For me, it's uh, uh, my life's purpose. That's why, like many years ago, I decided that I didn't want to be just a programmer, like like writing lines of code. I wanted my code to have purpose. And I know that the code that we do today, it changes people's lives every day. We can make people miserable, or we can make them awesome. I chose to make them awesome, so that's why I deeply care about what I'm doing. And also, I still use this term because uh, I thought that just doing the best, like in writing code, wasn't enough for me. And I, I decided to take this as a mission because, well, it's not a, I should not only do the best that I can writing, but maybe if I know something or learn something from experience, I should try to help developers to do better. So I'm very happy that right now I have this, the possibility of be doing that worldwide uh, with my role inside Red Hat. So I think, for, as again, what I do today for some people is just a job. For me, I'm very happy that I'm able to fulfill like my life's purpose doing what I do every day today. Yeah, I mean, you're very lucky as well to feel that way because for most people, it is a job, you know, and but if you can feel that excited about what you do, and, I, you know, as I said, I was in your talk and I, I saw that, you know, actually, you know, come through. Um, so you're at Red Hat, and what do you do there? Oh, my, well, my, my role is a director of developer experience at Red Hat, so part of my job is traveling worldwide and trying to tell developers how they can become even better in what they're doing. So I think that uh, my job is to like make developers like even more awesome so they can change the world for the better. And of course, with the feedback that I have, with the very nice conversations that I have, uh, like the ones that I had today, how, what are the things that makes them struggle, what are the points that we could improve. So I, with that, I talk to the product managers, engineers, um, sometimes I code myself too, uh, to help uh, improve the tools and the libraries, environments, frameworks that developers use so they can become even more productive. I've, I've seen you here in Japan before. This is at least the second time, maybe the third time that I've seen you. Um, you seem to come back, you seem to like it here. Yeah, I'll have to confess, like, I love developers worldwide, but Japan has a very special place in my heart. I'm a Brazilian Japanese, all of my grandparents are Japanese, and every time I land here in Japan, I feel something special. And I thought it was just like, uh, just a mind trick or something, but I really love uh, being here, like, the culture, the food, I'm a foodie. So yeah, it's hard. this is the place to be. Yeah, it's hard to argue against the food here. So it's again the place, the food, the people, the culture, and the ability to ability to try to help people in the land of my grandparents. So it all adds up. It makes like everything even more special. Excellent. So what's up with you after this event? I guess uh, this year I uh, not counting the trip. I already traveled three hundred and twenty thousand miles. So, uh, yes, and I spent like approximately 150 nights in hotel rooms. So I think uh, I had enough uh, travel-wise for this year. So I'll be very happy to go back to Thanksgiving in the US, stay with the family until at least next year, and maybe like recover a, a bit of my energy so I can, next year I can make developers even more awesome. Cool. Well, thank you very much for coming by. I know it's hard to hear right now, but there's a party going on actually, actually right behind us here. There's plenty of sushi and, and you know, beer and wine and things like that. So, Edson, thank you very much, and we'll uh, see you next time here in Japan. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.